Barry, you call yourself a, a quant trader, but a lot of I don't think a lot of public understands what exactly a quant trader is. Can you explain what it is that you do sure. personally? Uh, basically, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not a good uh, uh, econ person. Okay? I've had you know, a couple of I mean I've had pretty good exposure to econ, but I just consider myself an econ type, and that's a usually if you go into a, a trading. And investing, that's the route most people took. You know, fundamental analysts mm -hmm. came to the economics, economics department and so on and so forth in the major schools, and you go and work in New York. I didn't take that route. My area was uh, financial engineering, uh, which back then was pretty much called uh, operation research and uh, queuing, queuing systems, queuing theory, uh, uh, manpower loading, uh, transportation systems, Things of that nature. Um, the work I have done uh, was, uh, with that background, was really try to approach the market from a statistical standpoint, mm -hmm. from a numerical processing standpoint, which the word quant would apply. And so uh, you assign different values to different variables that are critical to you about that, uh, that market, that mm -hmm. stock, for example. Uh, I should say stock, not the market. Uh, so, for example, um, Either if you rank them by earnings per share, if you rank them by relative strength, if you rank them by put call ratio, if you rank them by the volatility, these are how you create a, a, a kind of a quant-based measure mm -hmm. of your universe. You know, so you have X number of stocks in there and you rank them accordingly. And then you set up some rules to see what how do you trade them and why. That's basically what the quant trader is. And then over the years, you add or you play with the nuances you know, uh, of how, how, how to do that a little bit better. The problem is once you start looking at futures, you never go back to stocks um, because it takes a lot of uh, – it reduces your effort, your research effort. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, people cannot touch it that easily. They cannot manipulate it because it's so big. Right. It's got so much depth. Uh, it's globally traded, so you can get out of a position overnight if something is wrong. Uh, you can also be hit, you know, I mean, obviously overnight. Um, as you know, I, I you, you see me very rarely I go hold the position overnight. Uh, I've, I, it's been a long time I've kept the position more than one day. Mm -hmm. Because if I held it today, by tomorrow I'll be out. Part of it has to do with your margin situation because it really ruins or changes around your margins quite a bit. Uh, but, uh, uh, if you want to be a coin trader, you have to be very disciplined by going by your numbers. You know, have a sort, for example, a key thing you have to have a sorting capability, you know, you know, using your Excel or some sort of sorting so that you don't go there and say, I like this one. Yeah. You know, that, that's out of the ball game. You need to see what the, the sort column is telling you. So you in know, a simple uh, way, you're just putting numbers behind what you're doing, which is what most businesses should be running anyway or – well, you, you, your selections, yeah, the, your selection criteria is basically run by some sort of a, a non-biased uh, scale, mm -hmm. whatever that is. You know, let's say it's volatility and EPS uh, and the price of a stock. So if these, this, and this meets, then you have a buy, for example. Yeah. Or this, and if this is low, if this is at its lowest for the last 12 months. This is at the highest for the last 12 months, and this is the range of the price. Then you want to take an action of that, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But you have a some sort of a selection criteria where you look at. And I, you know, I, I did. And you can do. You don't have to be fancy. I mean, um, right. I was doing some of this for my dad. Uh, when we bought, for example, uh, um, we bought um, a Shearson. Uh, I remember we bought Shearson before American Express bought it. Mainly because the Hunt brothers had taken down Beige, and Prudential came to save Beige, became pro Beige. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, for example, in that basket of different names in that criteria, Shearson was a screaming buy because it was just not evaluated big enough, even though it had a great management. And uh, Sandy Whale was there at the time. So what, when you look at the, both the management, the financials, and uh, you see the price-earning ratios. Uh, you, you, you look at what happened to Beige. You would say, you know what? 
this is a buy. This has yeah. got to be a buy. So next day I went and bought a bunch of uh, uh, Shearson stock. I think it was, it, it's, I forget what the symbol was. This is, this is 81, 82, 83 times. But anyhow. That was before, uh, that was when I was born. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think, I don't think we were there 90 days. We were less than that mm-hmm. when Amex came in the bottom of all right, outright. And I remember I bought it for my dad, for, uh, I suggested to a corporate VP of Northrop and a friend of mine, a social friend of mine. I got them all three in this, and at one point, one of them picked up the phone and said, do you know what block size this is? This is a lot of money in there. I said, well, yeah, we can get out if you like. <laughs> next day, you know, and while he was thinking what to do, next day, uh, uh, the, the uh, Amex announced they're going to take over. And so now I became a pretty smart guy. <laughs> you know, all yeah. of a sudden, said, by saying that, calls me back and says, that was a good move. So anyhow, um, that I remember was purely and simple. And I, I didn't have a Excel. I didn't have a short capability. I, I, I think at that time I only had an Apple II. But I took a clean piece of paper and wrote down the criteria I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. And looked up the, you know, I used to use a daily graph and a, a value line. Go in there and get the numerical data out and just write it on a clean sheet of paper. And the, if you do it in enough number of names, the values uh, show up. Mm-hmm. They come up. They, 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 they scream at you. You know, if you take a look and say, you know what? Oh, this is the one. Because all you're doing is a comparative analysis. Hello, this is Sari Hamzi. I'm with Three Gurus, and I'd like to invite you to join us for uh, another Three Gurus uh, uh, event. It will be March 3rd, uh, 2010, at 8 a.m., and it's a global webinar. We'll be talking about uh, options, futures, Fibonacci, sentiment. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, Forex, and, and, but, you know, our main uh, emphasis will be on derivatives. Hope you can join us.